Hey everyone, I am so excited to have you in my class, The Art of Telling a Compelling Story. My name is Lucy Heinen, and I am a brand new Senior Board of Directors member and Executive Director with Pure Romance. In 2020, I had $247,000 in personal retail sales, 40 activations, and an amazing $1.6 million team, the ringleader rock stars. And this class is near and dear to my heart because stories are one of my superpowers. So in this class, you're gonna learn how to relate to your guests, how to effectively educate and entertain, how to make your products memorable, and techniques to increase sales and long-term profits using those stories. So Stories to Success is going to make sure that you are learning how to relate to your customers because when you're showing women how to do or how to do business with you and who you are and what matters to you, you're going to create long-term connection. We're also going to talk about how to educate and entertain through your stories. It's going to allow you to make your demos easier, your parties smoother, and you're also going to learn why to incorporate stories into your demos and how to do it. Stories are also going to help you to increase your sales. They're going to play a role like how to sell high-end items, how to sell in sets, and offer an effective VIP program that actually works. Then finally, we're going to break down how stories can lead to long-term profits. Stories are going to make you memorable. When your customers remember you, they're going to do business with you long-term. So let's dive in. Relate. Stories are going to allow you to relate to your guests. At the end of the day, real women want to shop with real women. So you can actually create stories online and in person. But by being authentically you, you're sharing your stories with your customers, right? So here's an example of me. I'm boozing it up. <laughs> This was after a flash sale. I was exhausted. I was frantic. I was crazy. And I made sure that I let my customers see me in that moment as I was. That created a story. And I do feel like as women, most of us can relate to the moment where we're debating whether we want to drink wine out of a glass, out of a bowl, or maybe just straight out of the bottle. When you are incorporating your stories, it's really important to be yourself and think about what you have to bring to the table. Brainstorm ways that you can relate, right? Because chances are there's a lot of ways. Start to think about and maybe write this you know, down. You could do it right now. You got your notepad with you. What are some of your hobbies? What are things that you enjoy doing? Are you good at yoga? Do you paint? I don't know. What are you good at? What do you enjoy? Are you a makeup you know, professionista? What's something that makes you shine and that you enjoy? Do you have kids? Do you not have kids? Are you a single mom? Are you married? Are you divorced? Did you go to college? Did you not go to college? So start to really think about what makes you, you, so that you can use these to relate, right? A mom with six kids is gonna have an easier time relating to a mom that's frantic and has, you know, she's running her kids around everywhere than maybe someone who doesn't have kids would be able to. It's never good nor bad. Remember, all of these are gonna be neutral, but it's gonna give you indicators about the type of women that maybe you're gonna be able to relate to best. So all of these are ways for you to relate to your customers and connect. So use these to your advantage and don't fake them. I think more than anything, that's the most important thing, right? Do not try to fake being yourself because you think that yourself isn't good enough because we promise it is. Be yourself because everyone else is taken. You also wanna identify your superpower. Being authentically you is going to allow you to tap into what really makes you special, right? What are you really good at? Now, this is not what are you good at hobbies and yoga, right? We talked about that already. This is your essence, right? Your core. Are you a great listener? Do you love to empower others? 
Are you a good teacher? Are you funny? Like my superpower is my energy and bringing comedy to the table and just having fun and kind of rolling with things. That's what I'm good at. I don't know that very many people would call me a great listener because I'm too busy talking, right? So start to think about what are some traits that you have? Because chances are you're going to have multiple, but what traits do you have that make you special? These are your superpower and you wanna make sure that you're bringing them to the table. By knowing yourself and really knowing what your strengths are, your authentic self is able to shine through in your stories that you're choosing to create and that you're choosing to share. Again, don't fake a superpower, okay? If like fu being funny, if it's not really your jam, it doesn't come naturally to you, please don't try to fake that. If you're not a great listener, please don't try to fake that, right? Don't try to force a superpower that isn't authentic to you or another strength. Because while you're trying to fake a strength over here, you're not allowing your real superpower to shine through over here. We all have superpowers. We all have strengths. And chances are you have multiple. So take a second. Think about this. What's something that you are really good at? What do people say about you? That's a great default. If you are not sure, and I know that there's going to be some of you on this call that are like, some of you are like, oh, I got 10 superpowers. I got this. And you're writing them down. But there may also be some of you that are like, oh, I don't really have a superpower. I don't really have anything that makes me special. Girl, stop it. Stop it right now. Yes, you do. If you can't tune into it, what do people say about you? Do you inspire people? Are you a great listener? Do people say that you're funny? Because that's often a really good indicator about what our superpowers might be, okay? So take a second, write it down because you are gonna need it. Your superpower, again, is how you are going to relate to your customers, right? So we're gonna use your interests. We're gonna use your life. Those can create your stories. And then your superpower is how these stories are really going to shine. Another way that you guys can actually relate to your guests and allow your stories to kind of get out there into the world from a place that's authentically you, right, from that place of a superpower is what's trending. <laughs> this makes it really, really easy to connect with other women and to relate to other women because it's a good way of seeing kind of what's going on in the world. I'll tell y'all right now, social media is an awesome way of seeing what's trending kind of out there with other people. So what are women relating to right now? Exhaustion. <laughs> like, uh, homeschooling kids, going nuts in the house, like mask fashion, um, being teachers, like current TV shows, Netflix and chill, booze, <laughs> I feel like is always a good one for women between the ages of 21 and 100. <laughs> so start to look at your social media in a way where you can actually see, okay, what's trending with these women? Because again, that is another way where you can actually connect because it's common, it's popular, it's happening in the world. And so start looking at what is trending because this is what other women are relating to. And if you can hop on that bandwagon, right, it makes you relatable as well. Now we've talked a little bit about how to relate. So I feel like it's really important when to relate. We have so many opportunities to share our authentic selves and to share our stories and share who we are. Make sure that you're capitalizing on that, right? Take advantage of it. So let's talk about when you're gonna share those stories, okay? You have the opportunity every single time you talk to a customer to share a story or to share something about yourself or to connect and relate. Your party planning. Now this doesn't matter if it's via messenger, via voice memo, via phone call, via text, right? In person, this can be applied to anything, but in your party planning, you can relate to your hostess. We always say that our hostess is our number one recruit lead Girl, you better be utilizing that party planning to relate to her and to connect with her. Because if she's connecting with you after that party, she wants more, 
right? She wants to be in your bubble. She wants to be in your um, team. She wants to be part of you and what it is that you're doing. So party planning is a huge time to share stories and relate and maybe drop little seeds. Your event posts. So especially for virtual parties, this is particularly important because these women may not have had an in-home experience with you, right? It's a lot harder when you know you're not going to get that face-to-face -face opportunity to share stories. So utilize your event posts to be showcasing who you are and what you're about. You don't want to be the random sex toy lady. <laughs> We always know in this business that if it can be taken wrong, it probably will be. So this is your opportunity to show them who they are and kind of give them a preview of what they're going to be in for for the party. Your I story. We talk about this for in-home parties all the time, but girlfriend, you best be having an I story for your virtual parties too. Who are you? What are you doing, <laughs> right? This is where you can share. Do you have kids? Did you go to school? What's your pure romance story? That's the thing, I story, my story. They should call it the my pure romance story. <laughs> why are you here? Why did you get started, right? It's your why story, not your I story. So use that as another opportunity to share your story and to connect. Then we've got our 30 second commercials. This is quick. This could be typed. <laughs> this could be shared by a video. This could be in person again but use your 30 second commercial to share a story about pure romance and about what it is that we do. You also have the opportunity in your demos to relate and to connect with customers. We are gonna talk about that even more. And then there's the ordering room. Girl, if you're one of my like super listeners, if that's one of your superpowers, then the ordering room is a huge place for you to relate and to connect, right? One-on-one -on -one with these women. That's huge. This is where we can really have an impact if we're willing to just take a moment and relate and connect and then follow up. So literally every single connection that we have with these women is an opportunity to share a story and again, share who you are and what you're about. I also have to mention, it is really, really important that you're looking at the stories that you're telling about yourself and thinking about, okay, how do I portray myself? Okay, what am I showing to the world? And then is that in line with how you actually show up? The last thing that I want you to do is to go out there and create all of these stories and then have you show up in a different way. That's why it's really important that your stories are showcasing you, authentically you, your superpowers, who you are because it has to be in line. How you portray yourself and how you show up has to be the same. Almost, otherwise you're kind of breaking that trust, right? So I've got the little pictures on the slide here. We've got super professionista. She is business, all business, not a bad thing, right? But if you're portraying yourself as all business and then you show up like the bottom girls from Bridesmaids, right? That would be me. <laughs> I am not the top slide. <laughs> Are they, are you breaking their trust by saying, this is how I'm in a, like, this is who I am, but then you're showing up in a different way. These have to be in line. So always ask yourselves when you're sharing a story, when you're posting a story, when you're making an event post, any of these things is how I'm portraying myself and how I'm showing up the same. All right educating and entertaining. So a lot of this is going to be done through your party demos, but please remember that this is going to look a little bit different, especially with COVID and everything that we've got going on, but educating and entertaining your demos can be during your parties. It could be do doing like filmed parties. It could be filmed product commercials that you're sharing in events. This can be done in so many different ways, but we're just kind of going to talk about it generally in terms of educating and entertaining, right? So Stories are really good at highlighting your superpower. So we've got three aftershaves here. <laughs> so as an example, let's say we're talking about aftershave. If you are Miss All Business, okay, you are really educational, right? You might take a product like aftershave and be really focused on the ingredients, what they're doing for your skin, what they're doing for your body. Hell, you might even teach women how to shave. Fun fact, 
I'm 30 something. I have no idea how you're technically supposed to shave your legs. That's probably why they're a mess 90% of the time. So if you're coming from a superpower of education, again, maybe you're ingredient driven. Maybe you are talking again about how it impacts the skin. You're talking about all of the ways that the product specifically is going to help. Maybe you are an empowering, you know, you have an empowerment superpower. Like it's all about making women feel strong and confident and sexy and beautiful. You might take an aftershave as an opportunity to talk about, man, like if you're rocking Carrie Underwood legs, what that's doing for your confidence level, what that's doing for your feel good factor, but also what that can do for you, irregardless of a partner right? What that's doing for you with or without someone to be shaving for don't matter because you deserve Carrie Underwood Underwood legs all to your damn self, right? Maybe you're feeling yourself up. You should be rubbing those legs, right? Get some. So if you're coming from an empowerment place, then maybe that's your jam and your demo again is going to look a little bit different. If you are coming from a superpower of humor and of fun, right? Then your demo might look a little bit like mine. So I'm going to share that with all of you guys. So let's talk about aftershave. Ladies, I call this product my personal hero, aka the firefighter. Here's the thing. Let me back this up a little bit. One of the dumbest things that I have ever done was looking at men and thinking, you know what? Why do men not get really gnarly, gross, ingrown hairs? At least not like women do. I feel like their face is still really sensitive, but why is it that they're nice and smooth? But if you look at me wrong, or you look at other women wrong, ingrowns are like, right? And off they pop uh, everywhere, right? They're just everywhere. And it's itchy and it's uncomfortable and it's gross and it's nasty and it's all of these things. So here's what it did. I decided, that men didn't get gnarly ingrowns because they use aftershave, right? Obviously. So I hopped in my shower, (coughs) shaved all the things, hopped back out of the shower, grabbed my husband's big old bottle of aftershave, and I just poured it on. Everywhere. (laughs) Okay, ladies, let me tell you what. I did not equate the home alone (gasps) with the (gasps) that I had happening. (laughs) I, mama didn't realize the men's aftershave is basically just repackaged vodka, right? Like it is straight alcohol. (laughs) It burned so bad, so bad. So here's what I need to tell you. This is a no burn aftershave. You are not going to get the home alone (sighs) when you use this on anywhere that you might shave. The other thing that I absolutely love about the firefighter is not only is not going to have any burn, you are actually going to use this immediately after you shave. It's going to help seal the pores, kind of protect them, closes them up. That's actually not true. Nothing closes your pores, but it covers them. It stops them from soaking in any bacterias and gnarlies and yuckies and grosses and all the things on your towels. And anyway, I digress. This uses lavender and other essential oils that are going to naturally kill the bacteria. That's why men's aftershave works, right? Because it's repackaged vodka, AKA alcohol, it's killing everything. This does the same thing, but again, without that burn. So you're gonna use this immediately after you shave, but then you're also gonna use this day two, day three, day four, because we all know, maybe you've done a real good job shaving, right? You're checking it out and you're like, oh, hey girl, finally figured this out, woo, here we go. (laughs) And then you're in the grocery store two days later, and the itch strikes, right? You're like, oh God. Okay, I'm in Walmart. Probably can't put my hands down my pants. It's gonna end up on a security camera. (laughs) Then you realize though, you're in jeans. So it's all good. You can do the little (laughs) jean seam scratch real quick and just kind of get it. And you see a friend, you're like, oh, hey, Susan. And you can do the kind of scratch wiggle, but it handles it. Here's what I love about the aftershave. When you're spraying it on day two, day three, day four, it is actually going to help prolong the comfort of that smooth shave. It is going to make sure that you don't get the itchies, the scratchies, the burnies, the like razor bump after you shave. So immediately after you shave, day two, day three, day four, it's COVID, day 10, I don't know, (laughs) get down with your bad self. But the Healy aftershave is going to keep it smooth and long lasting, all right? Okay, let's talk about the funny. (laughs) So, Chances are you might've giggled a little bit. Hopefully you giggled a little bit 
when I did my oh, with the oh. Here's the thing. Who had a been there moment? I want to talk about funny as a superpower for a second, because I feel like there's a lot of women that want to incorporate one liners. They want to incorporate funny into their demos and they feel like maybe it's not authentic. Here's what I'm going to tell you guys about finding your funny and about using one liners. You could have any superpower and still incorporate education and entertainment, especially entertainment into your demos because it wasn't that I was funny. It was that you had a been there moment. That's what the power of common experience can do. This is what stories can do is it pulls out those common experiences that the women can relate to. You didn't necessarily laugh at my joke, right? About the, huh, with the, huh. what you laughed at <laughs> was that chances are you've either thought about using men's aftershave you have had <laughs> this moment where you have used men's aftershave or you related to men's aftershave or using men's aftershave, right? So it created a common experience. It created something that women can relate to, right? The other part of like this demo, you could talk about how men can use it, right? Listen, here's the thing with men. When they're using their aftershave, it's kind of like women putting on mascara. Mouths are always open, bless them. I just thought that men's mouths were open because they're a little lazy sometimes and it covers more surface area. I didn't realize that when men are using aftershave, their souls are leaving their bodies because their faces are melting off. <laughs> that might make women chuckle a little bit. But again, it's because they have seen men putting on aftershave going <gasps> and we can relate to that burn feeling and imagine what that would feel like to have your face on fire every single time that you shave. So it is creating that common experience. You don't have to be crazy, super funny to have a story that's gonna relate to your guests that they can chuckle at and laugh about. So we talked a little bit about entertaining. So let's talk about education. I think that one of the things that can happen, and I hear this sometimes, they're like, oh, well, you're really funny, but I educate. Girlfriend, I educate too but we have different superpowers. So maybe it just looks a little bit different, right? So let's break this demo down a little. I talked about aftershave burning, <laughs> cause it does. <laughs> I talked about how lavender is actually antibacterial. I talked about rashes not always being caused by, you know, shaving. It can be caused by that friction afterwards. I said that it won't hurt like hell, right? Mentioned that it's unisex. I talked about it kind of sealing and protecting pores. I also talked to them about how to use it, when to use it, and why to use it. Those are the three keys in your demo, and we're going to break that down here in a little bit. But I really want you guys to know that more than anything, you can do both. Okay, Your demos can be educational and entertaining, no matter what your superpower is. All right, I've got another demo for you guys. So I'm really excited about this product. Um, so I got permission from corporate to share this. This is not an official product yet. It's in testing. I don't know what they do with it. I don't know, it's in beta testing or whatever. So they're trying to figure out the name. They're trying to figure out the color. So this is the prototype for a new product. If you guys love the demo for this and you guys love the way that this product sounds, I need you to do me a solid. Okay. I need you guys to tell corporate how excited about this new product you are. Okay. I'm going to call it the ring because <laughs> they don't have a name for it yet. So I'm just going to call it the ring. Here's, here it is. All right. Oh my God. You guys, this product is going to be ah, like so freaking cool. Okay. This is one of our brand new C rings. This is the ring. Now, let me just take a second. Let me talk about the power of a C-ring. First and foremost, you can see there's a little hole there. You guys can just slide that straight onto your fingers and bam, you have an amazing solo clitoral stimulator that you guys can use by yourself with a partner. Maybe you're a sexy single, maybe you're dating. This is a great toy to bust out if you're not quite sure where a partner is gonna be with toys. You can use it on you first, then see about using it on a partner. But these were designed to slide onto a male partner. Then they are inserted 
Did you guys see that really awesome ridge that comes up? That is going to slide right against the clitoris so that y'all are getting clitoral stimulation in pretty much any position. Hands free. Let's just take a second to talk about that. All right. Because here's the deal. I feel like, oh, can't believe we're doing this. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Let's take a second to talk about clitoral stimulation. All right. We've all had this moment. Y'all are hanging out. You're on your hands and knees. Your partner is behind you. They're just kind of doing their thing, right? They're just back there working it out. And you're like, okay, so tomorrow I got to go to the uh, uh, Shuri store. Then I got to call my sister. Oh God, don't, don't think about that right now. Stop it, right? Focus focus. Partners back there, they're oblivious. Again, they're just kind of bumping, doing their thing. And as you're cruising, all of a sudden you start to feel a little spark, right? You're like, oh, what the hell was that? That almost felt good there for a second. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> and you keep going. You're like, oh no, that's still working. You know what? You start doing the bunny hop with your arm. You're like, I wonder if I can hold myself up with one hand. Oh, oh yeah, yes I can. All right, you know what? I got this. And all of a sudden you start taking care of business yourself. You add that clitoral stimulation. But again, you're on your hands and knees. Now you're one-handed. You're going to town. Your partner's back there and they're like, oh, I hear you. Cause you're making more noise cause you're actually getting into it now. But they hear you and they're like, oh, I'm doing so good. All right, I got you. And they start to go even harder. What happens to you down there? All of a sudden you're like, oh shit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, this is a little bit more work. Okay. Go faster. Go faster. What is that thing at the gym that my trainer yells at me? Oh yeah. Dig deep. <laughs> Come on, girl, you got this. And as you're going, you have that moment where you're like, oh, I don't think I could do this for much longer. And then you're like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> Neither can he, but come on, girl, let's go. Your orgasm starts to build. You're like, oh my God, here it is. <laughs> it's been a minute. All right. Three, two. And then your hand starts to cramp and you're like, no, 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 no. Come on, girl. You got this. You can do this. And you keep going, right? You got heart. <laughs> you're making it happen. This hand, you're not actually sure if it's twitching now or moving and rubbing, but it's working. And that orgasm starts to build again. You're making even more noise. Your partner's like, okay, I hear you. And they start going full energizer bunny at this point. You are getting thrown into the bed. Your orgasm is almost there. Your hand is about to fall off in three, two. And then this arm starts to shake. You're like, no, 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 oh, God. no, no right? This hand is cramping. This one is shaking and your partner, bless them, does what I call the slingshot. Don't know why they do it. Don't know why they all do it, but it's that moment right as you are about to orgasm, they pull themselves back in like slow motion and they go, Ugh! right? As hard as they possibly can. One time, slow mo. What happens to you with your twitchy hand, your almost orgasm, your shaky arm? <clears throat> Girl, you are straight into that pillow. You let out a scream. And they're back there like, yeah, girl, look at what I just did. And you are ready to commit murder at this point because you didn't get what you needed. Ladies, this is why you need a ring like the ring. When this is on the partner, you are getting the clitoral stimulation that you need. You can remain firmly planted and it's going to enhance the experience for both of you. They're going to get vibration. You're going to get some internal vibration. You'll also notice this has two rings down at the bottom. There's a split there. That makes it a really gentle testicle stimulator. So it goes on here. You see that first ring goes along the base and then the second one Gently pull up and over. You're not mad, right? Use lubricant. You're not trying to wax him. That is going to hold the testicles up against their body. That is going to give them a more intense orgasm when it releases. It's kind of like if you take a can of pop, shake it up real hard, it's going to explode all over everything, right? It puts the contents under pressure. This toy is going to put their contents under pressure so that when it releases, it's even stronger. So you are getting the clitoral stimulation that you need. They are getting stimulation as well. And to top it all off, 
it's not going to move. Because of its crisscross design, this is going to stay in place so that it maintains the contact against the clitoris. And then, like I said, you can still use this solo. You could also slide this onto a toy like our V39 or our bump and grind so that you're turning a single toy into a dual action toy that's fully customizable to you. I love this toy, you guys, and we need this in our demos. <laughs> Confession. Um, that product doesn't actually exist. It is never going to exist. So please don't tell corporate <laughs> that we need to have the ring. Because that was my demo for double feature. Okay, this is a silicone engagement ring from Amazon for $9.99. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's why, oh my God, please don't be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Here's why stories in your demos are so important. No matter what product you guys show, your stories don't actually have to change. So let's break down this demo a little bit. I related to women, right? I shared a common experience. <laughs> the clitoral stimulation while you're having sex is not always the easiest thing on the planet right? Women laugh over the one-handed bunny hop and over boom, straight into the pillow. Been there, right? done that. Is this creeper on my nightstand? I think that she might be. Those are the moments that you're looking for when it allows you to connect, right? We educated. We talked about why this toy is going to stimulate you. It's going to stimulate your partner. We talked about how, right? How to slide it onto the base of the penis that the other ring along the bottom slides along the back so that they're getting stimulation of the testicles as well, right? When, uh, I feel like all of the time, right? We didn't really have to touch the when. <laughs> but again, we did kind of talk about when because we talked about certain positions. We talked about when you need that clitoral stimulation, when you're engaging in intercourse with a partner, it's gonna make sure that you're getting exactly what you need, right? The why, so that you can orgasm. Right? So the how, the when, and the why is what made those stories important. That's actually why I could talk about the ring, AKA the silicone engagement ring from Amazon and the double feature the exact same way, right? The how, the when, and the why are why women buy products. Without the stories that are actually connecting and relating to the women, you're just talking at them right? With stories, you can actually show them. They're going to feel it instead of just hearing it. So stories are going to make your products memorable. And what that means, right? Huge advantage for y'all. New product, no problem. So you can actually take any of your stories and plug them into other places. That's why I can do a demo, pretty much any item, <laughs> and talk about how that could be a clitoral stimulator, how it could be a pleasure sleeve for him, how it could be used as maybe a bullet, how it could be used as a G-spot stimulator as long as it's curved, right? So when the products change, your stories actually don't have to, especially if you're a little bit newer, maybe you're not super comfortable with all of the products yet. If you are focused on stories instead of features, you'll notice when it came to the ring, I didn't say how many speeds it had, I didn't say how many functions it had. I didn't say whether it was waterproof and rechargeable and all of the things. Now, typically in my parties, I would briefly mention those things, but here's the thing. I actually have no idea how many features the double feature has, not a clue. Somebody wants to know, I'll check the catalog because that's not what sells the products. So many consultants focus on what the catalog has to say, right? What kind of batteries does it take? How long does it take to charge? What's the runtime? What's the material made out of? How many speeds does it have? I don't know. And she won't care either if she knows why she needs those products, okay? So the how, the when, the why, that is what's gonna share products, but then that is also what is interchangeable. So when new products come out, you guys, you've already got demos. You can change it up a little bit if you need to, but at the end of the day, your core stories that are relating to women are always gonna be the same. So I got a question for you. Which demos do you rock right now? Okay, I'm curious. I wanna know, write it down. What demos are you rocking right now? 
chances are this is what you're selling the most. Okay. What demos do you have that you love? What demo do you do that you love? A real talk. Okay. Is this actually the product that you want to be selling the most? So I'm going to use an example. A lot of women are like, oh man, my opening act demo, or they've got some sort of clitoral stimulator. That's their go-to demo. That's the one that they're rocking it out. So let's say opening act. You're like, yes, Lucy, opening act. My demo is so on point. And then I ask, awesome, how's your C80 sales? Right? And they go, oh, I can't, I can't sell the C80. Right? Or I can't sell, insert whatever it is here. Okay. Chances are you can't sell the C80 because all your good stories are with the opening act, right? So I actually want you to look through your demo, look at what you want to be selling and see what stories you can pull from maybe the items that you're not so focused on selling and see what you can change around, see what you can plug in and kind of just take a look at like, okay, if I'm talking about the opening act, maybe I don't have to use my really funny story about clitoral stimulation there. Wait a second, I could apply that to the C80 because I'm talking about the importance of clitoral stimulation. I'm not talking about anything specific to the opening act. So take a look at your demos, actually analyze them. Look at which ones you're rocking right now and then look at which ones you want to be rocking and shift your stories around, babe. That's the beauty of stories is that you can shift them and change them and move them around as you need to. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about increasing your sales because obviously shifting your stories to the products that you want to be selling, that is going to increase your sales. But I also want to talk about in your stories about products, isolating the benefits. Okay. Because here's the thing. <clears throat> oh, I can't say what I usually say. This is recorded. <laughs> okay, don't step on yourselves <laughs> when you are sharing stories. I'm going to use the example of Hydra Thrill. Okay, so when the like teal collection, sure thing, um, vitamin C, oh God, what's the other? make waves when all of those originally came out, they were in a collection called Hydra Thrill. They had Hydra Thrill motors, like, oh my gosh, people were putting them in water. The water was going nuts and it was splashing everywhere and everyone was real excited. And my first thought was, oh my God, I'm never doing that at one of my parties ever. Why? Because I'm not going to lie. I was not trying to make $129 dual action look more powerful than the $199 main attraction. I want to isolate specific benefits of each individual product. Okay. Look at your demos. Are your stories making certain items sound better than others? Are your stories making it an either, an or, an or? Are your products the same? Or your story is the same. So are you making the benefits sound the same? You guys are going to sell way more products if you isolate what makes each individual item special. Okay. You don't want to have dueling stories. Okay. They shouldn't be fighting with each other. Nothing in your demo should ever be an either or. So utilize your stories to make sure that you are isolating the benefits of each. So let's talk examples here, okay? When you are talking about toys, okay? Are you telling them why they need each individual toy? So I have a toy speech. Um, it is another way of creating a story. So here's kind of my quick introduction to toys. All right, ladies, I'm super excited to talk toys with you. Here's what I need for y'all to know. Number one, I want everyone to acknowledge that they may have a drawer of shame. Okay. Now it's not a drawer of shame because of what's in it. It's a drawer of shame because some of the items were bought at like a bowling alley from a vending machine when you were 19. <laughs> it is probably full of things that you have never used 
you have no interest in using. Some ex-boyfriend bought for you, right? Like the great American thing is massive. And you were like, <coughs> don't think so, but it's still in your drawer. I want all of you to go home. I want y'all to Marie Kondo your sex toy drawers. If it does not spark joy or orgasms, you need to throw it out. Okay, it is time to bring it into this century. It shouldn't feel bad when you look into this drawer. It should be beautiful. It should be exciting. It should feel sexy. Every single woman also needs to have one of everything. It's kind of like having a big girl closet, right? We've all got a little black dress. We've got a comfy pair of pants, right? The leggings, we have got jeans. We've probably got dress pants, right? There's certain staples that you need to have, right? You've got that in your closet. You should have it in your sex toy drawer. So first and foremost, every single woman should have an awesome clitoral stimulator. Doesn't matter if you're married, doesn't matter if you're one of my sexy singles, doesn't matter if you're playing the field. 90, 80, 90, a bunch of women, most women, <laughs> orgasm from clitoral stimulation. So you need to make sure that you have a great go-to that is going to lead to that orgasm. Also, if you are one of my sexy singles, bullets, small clitoral stimulators are an awesome dating toy. Because listen, <laughs> if it's your second or third sex date, that man or woman is never ever going to be more likely to try to please you than in that moment. That's when you need to bust a toy out. If they are not willing to go there, if they are not willing to experiment, if they are not willing to even try it with you, sex date number two, mama, don't go there. You got time. You can fix it. You can go backwards. <laughs> Do not wait until you've been married for 10 years. If you're dating, you're in a really unique position, right? To utilize that and move forward. So make sure that you're doing that. Bring that in. Then we've also got dual action toys. Everyone should have a dual action toy. It's the jack of all trades, master of fun. Every woman needs to have a solid G-spot toy because the G-spot is going to be specifically targeted and isolated so that you can have the best orgasm of your entire life. If you are in a relationship, you need to have a C-ring, right? Like the ring. You need to have a couple's toy, something that's really for the two of you. And then you can add on as you go. Okay. So again, you guys are isolating the benefits. Don't make one sound better than the other and don't make them sound like they're competing. As long as they're not competing, then that also allows you to sell in sets. This is how top sellers, big sellers are selling nine, 10, 12, 15, 20 items, because we isolate which eat what each item does differently, not what they do the same. At the end of the day, y'all, we've got 10,000 toys for three places. Okay. So isolate what they do separately, craft the stories to create the desire, and then you can sell them all. Stories are also going to increase your VIP program because with VIP, you guys don't make it about the free product. Okay. Make it about the experience of being a VIP. Tell a story. Talk about how women deserve this how when they treat themselves, they are really telling themselves that this is okay, that they are worthy of this, that they deserve to have a happy and a healthy sex life, that she is special, right? And that everyone in the room or everyone at the virtual party is gonna celebrate and cheer her on, right? So utilize those stories when you're talking about VIP, make it popular, normalize it, give them permission and craft a story around how VIPs are special and then craft a story around how your hostesses, right, are getting rewarded, they are getting treated because of those VIPs, not about the free products. Then we've got long-term profits, okay? Who remembers this? Oh! <laughs> Right. Again, we created a moment. We create an identifiable moment where I went oh, with the, oh, and when we go, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I remember that. That was the firefighter stuff. That was that no burn stuff. You guys, you remember it, but so do your customers. Here's the thing. If you create a really memorable story, your customers remember it and then they can share the story for you. I guarantee you guys, if one of your party guests goes out, has a girlfriend who puts her hands down her pants and scratches, she is going to tell her that she needs the firefighter. She's going to be like, listen, you need to use aftershave. And she's like, oh God, no, aftershave burns. And she's going to be like, oh no, girl, I totally get it. Because you think you're going to get the oh, with the oh, but you don't. Lucy has an aftershave that doesn't burn. She calls it the firefighter. Right? Now you guys might notice I renamed 
the aftershave, the firefighter. That makes it memorable as well. And it's easier to remember. Your customers are not going to remember. What is it even called? <laughs> Your customers are not going to remember. Healy Soothing Aftershave Mist. It's a beautiful name and it looks gorgeous on the bottle, but I don't know that if I was referring someone to this product and to you, I would necessarily be like, hey girl, so-and-so referred me. I need the Healy Soothing Aftershave Mist. She'd be like, hey girl, I need the firefighter. I, got, <laughs> I want the no burn. I want the no burn stuff. I know exactly what they're talking about. So when your customers can share the stories, it's gonna increase your level of referrals, but also it is going to increase your reorders. Here's the other key. When your customers remember your stories, they remember when, how, and why. So when they get home, they actually remember how to use the products. How many of y'all have heard, oh, I haven't used that yet. I totally forgot that I could do that. You don't want that. These are consumable. You want them to go home and consume them <laughs> so that they use more. So they're going to get attached to your story. They're going to get attached to you. Because again, you want them to remember you and you want them to remember your superpower, right? They are going to share too, on top of sharing the no burn on top of sharing the firefighter on top of sharing the ah, with the ah, they are going to share how much you cared about her or how well you listened to her or how empowered you made her feel or how hard you made them laugh right those are all of the things that they are going to be passing on to other people so that is where this is really going to allow you to create long-term profits you connected, you related, you allowed them to go out there and do the same, but it's kind of like they're doing it in your name, right? They're taking your stories. They are sharing those stories. They are using those to convey you and your brand. That's creating super fans from your superpower. Hell to the yes, right? It doesn't get any better than that. Now, we actually have another platform too, outside of our parties, outside of our demos, outside of just kind of general, and that's social media. Especially right now, social media is huge, right? We know that, that's our main way of connecting right now. Here's the thing, Soup, your social media is going to keep your customers engaged with your superpower. So if you have an interaction with them, they are going to remember you they're going to see you. Maybe you made them laugh really hard, right? Every time they see you pop up on social media, they are going to be taken back to that moment. I had a lot of women with my that double feature demo, the ring demo, where I'm on my hands and knees and they are laughing so hard that they're crying. When they see me doing something silly and ridiculous on social media, it takes them straight back to that moment that we shared. Or it takes them straight back to that one video that I did that one time that made them feel powerful or made them laugh or made their day a little bit better. So utilize your social media to keep your customers engaged, especially right now. Again, doesn't matter what your superpower is. You need to let it shine through on your social media. And don't forget, right? I already said it and I'll say it again. You need to remember how are you portraying yourself and how are you showing up? When women look at my social media, they can see a goof, right? They can't, I mean, shit, I got my damn foot stuck in a mouse trap not that long ago. That was my slipper. That is a mouse trap. That was my foot in it, <laughs> right? They are seeing me with my Jose Cuervo, my cheap booze. They are seeing me with my goofy dog. They're seeing me like a crock pot because why not? They are seeing me shave my legs for them live because I was talking about how I don't actually know how to do it right? This is how I show up in the world. And this is how they see me. So you become your brand with the stories that you guys are sharing, right? Remember, you guys need to portray yourself in the way that you're going to show up in the world. You need to be authentically you. So in this class, you've learned how to relate to your guests, ways to effectively educate and entertain through your party demos, through the way that you guys talk about the products and how to make them memorable, as well as techniques to increase your sales and your long-term profits, okay? But here's the most important thing. Here's what I want you guys to leave this class with. We talked about stories. We talked about the art of telling a story. You, babe, 
you are the foundation of all of your stories. Okay. So yes, use them to increase your sales, use them to relate to your guests, use them to educate and entertain, use them to sell products, use them to boost that memorability factor and those long-term profits. But most importantly, you need to be putting your own story out into the world. Share who you are because who you are is incredible. Who you are is beautiful. Who you are is enough. You are deserving. <laughs> your authentic self, your superpower, no matter what it is, is more than enough. You are capable <laughs> exactly the way that you are. So don't shy away from your main story. Don't shy away from telling small stories. Step into your story and you will step into your spotlight. So much love and great storytelling your way.